Uh, my story is very uh, small. It doesn't have any of the fancy stuff of big, uh, big shows of big money. It's uh, the story of my neighborhood uh, where I work and live in the periphery of Bologna, and how, um, for me, um, everything changed when a group of refugees was settled there. Um, from they were coming from Kosovo, late 90s. And I, I crossed paths with them. I was working in a school. And um, I mostly worked in interview. I'm an ethnographer. So I interviewed about 20 teenagers. They grew up in this incredibly changing space. Uh, on one hand, they lost everything. They arrived in Italy with very little. And on the other hand, they were um, pressured to keep their tradition to be a good Roma kid within by their families. So I'm mostly interested in this place of tension where they found themselves and how this um, right now of this group of people that arrived from the 90s from the Balkans, <coughs> there are about 40,000 and that's like a third uh, between 25 and 30 percent of the total Romani population in Italy. And 60% are minors, and it's the importance of looking at the younger generation. Um, you can see um, the kind of setting where the Romani camps are put in Italian cities. Uh, river, riverside, very, very peripheral. Mm? There is nothing else past uh, these fields. They are very isolated. Usually, um, the place where I worked was more like those red houses um, on the right. Just popular, middle class, working class, good Italian neighborhoods. Um, but really, the, the very concept is that uh, they were not recognized either as economic migrants nor as refugees. They were kind of left in this zone of abandonment and residential segregation. In that context, um, I was uh, part of this kind of lefty, idealistic group of college students that wanted to do something to improve our neighborhood and organize a festival of ethnic music and dance to meet, to create an opportunity for the Italians to meet the new neighbors, the new guests. They were, of course, already preceded by a completely negative media campaign who dwell on all the stereotypes of the Roma as uh, the one that would have increased crime, they would have brought diseases to the neighborhood, they would have brought down the park, uh, the school system. And so our was a small project, just an attempt to um, create a space in common. So what, uh, what we didn't realize is that we were going against a lot of uh, what Italian institutions do when they deal with the Roma. They, they constantly, in the school and in the cities, anything that has to do with the Romani tradition and culture has to be stigmatized and hidden by the youth in order for them to be successful. Um, so I have, uh, we involuntarily also created some tensions in the families. Uh, we wanted to show the value of the Roman culture and music and increase this awareness of, um, of the specificity um, of their tradition. But uh, we came into the camp um, as a group of young women and we were not really fitting the usual uh, standard of uh, people that will visit the Romani camp. Normally, um, the camp is visited by policemen, by the city, um, city staff that would bring the basic necessities like water or deal with documents. But really, this group of young women, um, kind of alternative leftists, they, the leaders, the informal leaders, the head of the families were, did not really what to do with us. So they pointed us towards this group of um, young men They were hanging out. Pretty much, I think, judging from the age group, seeing who will be the right people to talk to. Um, and among them, we met uh, a couple, uh, a kid that uh, asked me to 
to share uh, this information with you guys. I asked him permission to use the photos of him and his family, but he asked me to change his name. So I'm gonna call him Shani, just because I think there are some similarities with other people I know. Uh, he was very talkative, easygoing, and uh, a real natural leader in the camp. And he actually made a huge success out of this small dance project. In the neighborhood, he now teaches music and dance workshops in various Italian cities and works with the association with the only professor of ethnomusicology in Italy, uh, Sinti, uh, Santino Spinelli, who, um, who have a yearly festival promoting Roman music called uh, Amico Rom. And uh, I'm going to kind of give you the sense of uh, what happened to Shani from this small, uh, small story of organizing a community event. He had to first uh, negotiate uh, with uh, his wife the permission to, uh, which is Juba, this beautiful woman with the drum. Uh, they, was, uh, they were married since they, was, they were 16 and um, she was illiterate, she came to Italy later than Chani and did not have a chance to go to school while he had been attending elementary school in Italy in various places because the family was, was displaced and uh, constantly um, re had to resettle. But uh, he, she was uh, not convinced about this idea that we would come pick up uh, Shani, bring him to the cultural center late at night and then drive him back. And she was home uh, taking care, as everybody does, of the family and all the responsibilities of children and cooking and cleaning in the household. Um, so she, she got very upset with us and the other women that I, we were going to and um, asked us uh, not to come back and to leave her husband alone. And uh, so we discussed with the, um, with the director of the music project, who very intelligently suggested to move the rehearsal times in the afternoon and invite um, Juba as well, so the two together could dance and share this experience. Um, that uh, also created more tensions in a way because Shani had to become the person that would ask permission to his father and the camp to bring out of this, the neighborhood his wife. There is a sense of protection um, around the, the figure of the Bori, the young woman. She's not usually going around the neighborhood by herself. And she was also very conscious that um, um, she didn't really feel comfortable to just hang out with this group of Italians in, in a public place. So the first time she came with uh, her sister and her sister's child and just watching what we were doing in the rehearsals. Um, then Shani was also trying to tease her a little bit and invite her to come in. And uh, eventually the director of the project realized that she was an incredible a dancer and an amazing stage presence, a really beautiful and graceful woman on stage would have been crucial for the success of our uh, final show. Um, so once uh, we got over that, um, she, uh, this is uh, when they got married and this is how they look like now. And um, the mother of Shani was also very important in these mediations. Dragana, and um, she, that part of the project, that part of the tension was solved. But as soon as the project of uh, the, the show came up, the father and Dragana, the mother of Shani, brought up another issue, which was the loyalty to their own culture and tradition. So they asked, um, while Shani was more and more enthusiastic of participating in this theater dance project, his parents were more and more suspicious. Were, what was going to happen with this? They usually were very supportive about their son, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that he's now a good leader and a very mm, well-adjusted person, despite having lived through the war. And uh, they were absolutely fearful 
that the performance was being filmed by the Gaji and then used in a context that they couldn't have any control over. And that somehow uh, sharing this dance and ritual with strangers was going to um, create a possibility for their son to be humiliated and to feel misunderstood and in a way a crushing, another crushing for their son's self-esteem. Um, the school had already tested Shani deeply in the sense that uh, the teachers and his peers were constantly, constantly um, asking him to hide anything that had to do with his Romani culture, his accent, anything that has to do with uh, his uh, religious beliefs, uh, his way of dressing even. Um, the fact that he was married, oh, everybody in school teased him for that. So um, the parents did that, uh, created an obstacle from a point of view of protecting him, not because they wanted to exclude him from something. Mm, so eventually we agreed that the performer was not going to be filmed and it wouldn't involve any singing or saying words in Romani out of context. And the other point was uh, to assure Dragana and people, the fathers, the parents, that the young wife was not going to be exposed, exposing herself to the Italian in decent ways through the dance. Uh, so the, we went through all this negotiation, the father came along, people came along and uh, watched our rehearsing and eventually granted the permission sorry, um, to, to let them play. Uh, so in a way, uh, seeing that their culture does not foster internal discrimination. Of course we always have to remember that in the reality, the facts are a lot of the Romani kids in their teenage years, because of gender, uh, tend to drop out of school. And uh, even in Italy, um, only 20% of Romani youth f completes high school. Most people drop out in the end of middle school, and that has a lot to do with the young women coming of age. So it is a real concern, it is a real change that somehow the community have to deal with, but I just wanted to point out that even in such a small project, that idea of gender equality came about from the Italians. Um, so I have two more minutes and I am just going to <laughs> tell you how not only the project continue over time, we still do this, we just did one a month ago with the association that I am part of. And because of the increased xenophobia in Italy in the last 10 years, they have been very successful, just as pro mm, small uh, moments in which people can interact and somehow meet an actual, you know, Romani family without the preceding stereotypes. And um, Shani also convinced his sister to participate, the, the daughter that of the sister with the costumes and the outfits. So every time they're asking somebody, when some of the relatives, when they go to Macedonia, to Shutka, to buy something special for their shows. Um, Chani also had to deal throughout the last five years with a major crisis with his father. He became the head of the, his household. Uh, his father was uh, detained and deported for overstaying his visa. So at the age of 20, he was responsible for a large group of people financially. Having dropped out of high school, he said the only place where he enjoyed interacting with Italians was the dance group. And um, the school was traumatizing and really he invested a lot of energy in these projects of um, multicultural education, I would say, from below, from a very kind of local perspective. Now he's making it, he bought a house, he has a nice car where he can drive everybody to the market every Friday, and he still found a way to speak publicly about his identity and his cultural heritage. Um, he's, uh, so basically my conclusion I would say is that the dance project worked on a local level because it opened the space for the Roma youth to express 
their cultural heritage positively and gave a chance to connect with the other Italian cultural institution. The same director that worked with him in 2002 is still working with him today. And that is really the difference between these kinds of projects and what the mainstream Italian institutions are doing. The reason why the school are failing so much in retaining the Romani students is because they have made absolutely no effort to invite them into sharing their cultural heritage and no effort in communicating with the parents, no effort in trying to understand that um, the parents' concern often have to do with uh, not damaging further the self-esteem of the youth. Um, so they have struggled to maintain this rich body of knowledge which expresses itself non-written non non ways but through music and dance and uh, it is very important to, to use that as a tool for um, inclusion. That's, uh, and I hope one day uh, my friend and his family will be able to come here and speak on this podium about his experience instead of me having to do these translations and kind of conveying their voices in the places of you know um, institutions and universities so that's all i wanted to tell you thank you